Clock in, clock in. Black guy just walked in. He already dead, there ain't no need to check his vitals, pics. Yeah. He already dead, there ain't no need to check his vitals. Team Black got to stand up, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking about my yell was so weak, y'all. Excuse me, my voice is damn near going. You feel me? But I hope y'all having a wonderful day, wonderful morning. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the sun night. You feel what I'm saying? If you got your buns out, that's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? If you if you a male and you got your chest out, you feel what I'm saying? Flex one time. You did. But we are back with another video on this melody situation. This time we got track joining the world with the interview, you know what I'm saying? Before we even get into this video, I wanna let it be known, bro. Track is a fucking wonderful dude. That is a wonderful guy, bro. I be seeing stuff being said about him too. Half of it be funny as heck, but the other half be like, come on now. Y'all, what do you expect from this dude, man? This man is a freaking good dude who take care of other people's families, bro. Not only does he take care of other people's family, bro, he really cares about the people he works with. Like, not even on just a business level, he likes these dudes personally, bro. He cares for their well-being, bro. And it's like, obviously, he's going to do whatever in his power to make sure the people that he loves is in the best position possible, whether they right or wrong. Fam, what would y'all do in his position? You feel me? So let's stop with these little weird-ass stuff people be saying. Oh, he did that wrong. He doing this. Like, stop it. What you expect? But we all know I'm finna keep it the whole blue. We are finna watch a lot of the stuff he said in the interview. And I know y'all want to hear my take on it and how I feel about it. So that's exactly what I'm finna give y'all how I feel about it. Whatever he has to say. First clip we about to see is him explaining where he was at. The day this happened. I was home that whole day playing video games, playing 2K. I think it was 2K20 something or 2K19. I was just playing video games the whole day. Track wasn't in the recording studio that night. I asked him how he found out that Juvie and Sack had been killed. The next day in the morning, um, I got a call about it. You know, I was just very heartbroken. I was very confused. Was, and then I didn't know what was happening. So we uh, went to go see him. Um, he already had his mom and a couple other people there. And, you know, we just basically we were just trying to pull it together and stuff like that. He had a lot of he had a lot of activities after like shows and video shoots and other things. And I personally, man, I wanted to just shut everything down and just, you know, give him some time. But, you know, he. But that situation, he didn't really want to be at a standstill. His mind was all over the place. So he wanted to keep working just to kind of like keep his mind off it and just keep moving. So it was a very tough day. <clears throat> that was a tough day. Okay, I'm pretty sure we all didn't need track to let us know he wasn't there at the studio. Because not only does common sense let us know he wasn't there at the studio, but the video footage of the people at the studio and leaving the studio also explains a clear fact that he wasn't at the studio. So we kind of knew that. Now, we can't say what he was doing for real, so I definitely believe him. Or he could have been getting some ass. He was doing something other than being at the studio. And him finding out in the morning, I feel, is also the truth. Because not only did he find out in the morning, everybody else found out in the morning. Matter of fact, didn't the shit happen in the morning? So there was no other time to figure out when it happened or not. So, yeah, it definitely happened in the morning. But when he went to mention it, oh, like, he wanted to put everything to a standstill and stuff like that, but Melly wanted to keep going, bro. Things definitely started getting off track, and I feel like they definitely used this interview that we're listening to right now to make track look some type of way, bro. Because I'm telling y'all, when we see that next clip, y'all gonna see, like, damn, you saying Melly sad as hell, but Melly out jigging, having fun. I'm talking about he turned, they doing stupid handshakes, but it looked like he just caught him a M. I ain't gonna lie to you. It looked like he just he just got one up on the ops. You did know what I'm saying? But we all know Melly is just that happy person. But him saying he wanted to put everything to a standstill and we see this video that we're about to see right now, you'll be like, damn. God damn, boy, well, you too happy, boy. You did know what I'm saying? Yeah, but see, but listen to what Track had to say here. Portland claimed to police that they'd all been victims of a drive-by. Track said he saw Melly that morning. Was that Fredo Bang's house? Was he there or? I'm not sure if I went to his house or Fredo's house, honestly, because as it was so long ago, but 
I remember his family was at his house. We went to his house too. So it was like a little bit, everybody was a little bit in different places and things like that. I don't remember exactly where I met him, but because I did go to both houses. I, so I really don't remember which one. The only thing that threw me off about him not remembering where he picked Melly up from, and obviously it's smart for him to not remember where the hell he picked Melly up. Why the hell would you say where? It, it, it already looked like they trying to make everything look so super messed up, you feel me? So I'm obviously sure he don't want to say the wrong thing, and that's smart of him not saying the wrong thing. But what throws me off is, nigga, how the hell you remember you were playing 2K the night the shit happened, but you don't remember where the hell you picked him up from, bro? Boy, you a little bit too hot, so boy, you need some milk, milk, boy. You tripping. Hey, are you gonna tell the fool you were playing 2K, but you don't remember where you picked fam up from? Sack and Juvie were killed after leaving the recording studio. Portland arrived at the hospital at 4.35 a.m. This week, prosecutors played a video of Melly and Portland at a video shoot later that day. Track was there. He was f***ed up, man. Like, you know, that was, like I said, that was a rough, rough morning and a rough day. And um, I'm very surprised and, you know what I'm saying, and I definitely commend him for it, for just being able to just even go into the video shoot and being professional and doing what he had to do. Because that those commitments was done way, like, prior before the incident. Those, you know, deposits was paid and, and you know, and it was either A, refund back the money and funds and things like that, or, you know, B, do what he got to do and just man up and do it. And he was able to put himself together and, and get it done. But the whole day, man, it was it was a it was a very like sad, sad day. Like you could tell the atmosphere was was down, you know, his energy was down. He was trying to pick himself back up, trying to, you know, block it and just be professional and do what he gotta do. But you could tell he was hurting really bad. So he was really devastated. There was like a really big bodyguard with him that day, or at least it looked like a bodyguard. Uh, the woman in the video said yeah. it was I mean, were you, yeah. did you hire the bodyguard or did he always have security or were you worried for always, his safety? I, I, or? Always, I always have, um, I always hire security and bodyguards whenever we're doing anything public. If it's a, a show or a video shoot or anything that's going to be marketed or promoted to the public, he, uh, we always hire security and things like that. That's part of my job to make sure he's safe and have those, you know, have someone around him that could that could make sure he's safe. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody glad that, you know, Melly pulling himself together, you know, in a tragic situation like that, losing your best friends, bro. And like right after seeing them like that shit, it would definitely hurt a lot of people, fam. And to be strong enough to like get up and still handle your business and grind, that's saluted by, I believe, everybody. You know what I'm saying? But boy, Melly was crank, fam. He was super turned all the way turn the like damn and if you really in the streets you don't know why melly would turn up though for real you feel what i'm saying melly could have slid right back on the ops who slid on them and, and like okay you took two we took by six you feel what i'm saying it could have been he could have been turned for anything but generally speaking it just looks crazy as hell to the media that fam is just that turn like Boy, you hyper as hell, boy. You keep doing shakes. You in Portland. Portland, you could see the look on his face like vibe, fam. Portland could have probably been peeping something. Melly ain't peep, man. That begs the question, who would want to hurt Melly and his friends? Did anybody ever threaten him and the other guys before this happened? You know, Portland said this was a drive-by. When you're in the limelight and you're making money and things like that, you're going to receive hate. You're going to receive, you know, death threats. You're going to receive things from everywhere from people you know people you don't know people who probably feel obligated or feel you know what i'm saying entitled to things people who might not even know you from the campaign they just don't like you so you know as an entertainer your life is always uh you know your life is always being threatened by somebody or someone so i'm pretty sure but he always handled he always handled himself you know what i'm saying well he always made sure that he you know do what he got to do in and out you know he never lagged and never put himself in a place, you know, for stuff like that to happen, so. So he, was he getting threats? I'm pretty sure he was. I mean, all, I get threats. Entertainers get threats. I got artists now that get threats, and they're not even at a, as big as he was. So, yeah, 100% he was getting threats. I mean, that's, I think that comes with this game, though. It comes with the money, it comes with the fame, it comes with people wanting to be, you know, 
in your shoes or just don't like you for no uh, for no reason. At one point, Melly told Sack that she had sold her soul and called his mother many names. Then she keep telling people about me, and I'm not even worried about her, bro. I'm trying, I'm trying to bull do me. Why? And that's always worried about me. And what the are you talking? about how you gonna leave and we can't even get in the gate without you be on some crazy on some crazy what page is that 49 mr howard and the response on august 30th 2018 12 41 p.m from the 9807 like i don't even even be knowing what the to say no more she do out of the blue she the devil for real crazy i don't got to do with it no more if you all kill her bro she ain't my mama she she sold her soul people have you know people have miscommunications and you know sometimes arguments but it was never to a point where it was nothing nothing serious you know at the end of the day that's his that's his mother and we all know that from Sack to you know his friends to whoever they're always gonna have the utmost respect for her. Um, certain things you know as a mother she may not like or find appropriate, and you know that's her right too as as his mother. But anything that happened like prior with them, there was always it was always at shows together. It was always you know positive. It was always a good time. So I, I wouldn't say there was anything deeply brewing. I would say they had miscommunication sometimes and you know they didn't see eye to eye but that's that's every that's anybody zach and jamie zach jamie jamie um his mom you know what i'm saying and i feel like everybody go through when you're together and you're doing something you know you're gonna have you're gonna have you're gonna have things happen where you don't agree with certain things and stuff like that so i feel like that's normal yeah. but i'm saying i don't think it was nothing in depth where it was like that was out to get each other. It wasn't, it was never that serious. Okay. Cause Sack was saying in one of them, something about, I feel like you guys are up to something or something like that. Um, so I didn't know if there was some bad blood there and there was like a video nah, that Jamie bad. put on YouTube or something where she said Sack threatened her. I don't think it was ever no bad blood. Cause we would have Sunday dinners at the house. Everybody would be eating food, talking, having a good time. So I don't feel like it was never no bad blood. Or like I said, there's probably times where they didn't see eye to eye and maybe took the wrong approach. But that's us learning and, you know, people not realizing certain things live forever on the Internet. But it was never that intention, like where it was bad blood. Like I said, these we they would see each other through shows and events and dinner and things like that. She'll come cook at the house. And so it was never it was never that serious. That, you know, Bortland said this was a drive by. Have you ever thought about who would have done something like this? It would have been, I mean, it would have been so much people. You know what I'm saying? Like, not would have been, it could have been so much people. Because, like, at the end of the day, this man was like, you know, had jewelry, you know, had a large sum of money and things like that. And don't know um, where it could have came from, but I do know it came from somewhere. And, you know, maybe one day we'll use our resources to find out who really did it and um, bring justice to the to Sack and Juvie and the victims. Now, Track, I know you ain't going to sit here and say, oh, people go through stuff, it be miscommunications and all type of other stuff. Bro, this man dead ass just said, I wouldn't care if you murk my mom, fam. She sold her what, fam? Come on, bro. That is more than miscommunication. That is miscommunal milk cacation. You know what I'm saying? Too much hot Cheeto, fam. Like, what in on earth made you even say that, fam, in a text message, fam? You just gave your homie the green light to damn up. Blick your mom, fam. Rather you was playing or not, rather you didn't mean it or not, like, damn. Why say that, you feel me? Now, we done seen in history and in time, there done been multiple people who done been framed for shit. Unintentionally and intentionally as well. You dig what I'm saying? This situation and every other situation that's not already solved is always up for question. But my nigga, these people literally have everything they need to frame you if that's what they was doing. They got literally done to almost everything they need other than complete and physical proof. You feel what I'm saying?
But other than that, boy, all the angles and stuff they throwing out there, the, the holes and stories, the forgetful people, like all of this stuff, bro, make shit look some type of way, rather you like it or not, bro. Rather you want to cap and keep it real or rather you want to be a hundred and say, damn, shit looking wow. And then bringing out all the stuff about sex saying is y'all trying to set me up and all type of stuff. Like, bro, all of that shit add up while you sitting here track and saying it was no bad blood and stuff like this wouldn't happen. Sometimes it be your closest people sometimes, bro. And we can't just keep talking to these folks. Yes, I'm talking to people who's in the black communities and stuff like that. You just can't be talking to these people like these people are just complete idiots and they don't use their mind to think and try to put two and two together. They made track talk and while track was talking, they was putting videos in the back of Melly turning up, making everything track saying look like a damn lie. Making everything he was saying look crazy. Cause Melly was looking turned and having fun. You feel me? But enough about how I feel about this situation. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this in the comments below. Y'all know what I'm doing. I'm enjoying nature. And y'all, I'm going to catch y'all next video. Love, man. Scooby!